Hey everyone, and welcome to the Jen and Margie Show. I'm Mike Tarosian, sitting in for Jen, and I'm Margie Wigan. Nice to see you guys. Soon to be the Mike and Margie Show. I'm working on that. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so Margie, what do we got going on tonight? A lot of we, stuff. Yes, we have three segments as usual. Our first segment, we are very happy to have Peter Mezzet with us from Weston Nurseries. We're going to talk about the Brews, no, Blooms, Brews, and BBQ event that happened last Saturday. I was there. It was fabulous. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about DACA, which is um, an ongoing thing in the government right now, and we'd love to hear your opinion. Please call us at 508-435-7880 um, to join the conversation. Just to, just to share thoughts. Some people think it's good. Some people aren't so sure. Um, and then our final segment, we're going to talk about scenic roads in Hopkinton. What is a scenic road? What are they doing at Saddle Hill? Um, and anything that you have to say about that. So those are our three segments. And uh, again, please join the conversation. That's why we're here. We love to talk. Clearly, yeah, we have no talk problem talking. But time, we constantly. really want to join in conversation with you. So. So, Peter, a little busy Saturday. Tell us what that event was all about. That event was, first of all, it was the best event we ever had. It was Yay! a great event. Turned it was great. great. Thank you for coming, Margie. Oh, yeah. Um, but we have been bef behind the Jimmy Fund walk for years. My wife started walking 15 years ago, and she got me into it maybe 10 years ago. And we've always recruited employees to walk. And this year, we really wanted to get the word out that this is a big, very important event that takes place right here in Hopkinton that not many people know about. And it's Jimmy Fund walk. Um, it, it pretty much starts before the sun comes up and nobody knows it even happened. But it raises $9 million. Last year it raised $9 million for the Jimmy Fund, Dana Farber. It's the second biggest fundraiser next to um, the Pan Mass Challenge. But this is the one that starts at the common, does the marathon route? Right, yeah. it is the marathon. It is the Boston Marathon Jimmy Fund Walk. Right. That's mm -hmm. what they call it. So participants can walk the whole thing, which I would say a lot of them do, maybe half. Mm -hmm. And you could always walk 13.1 miles. Um, or you can do a, 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 a 10K or a 5K. So, or you can do a virtual walk. You don't even have to walk. <laughs> virtual walk. Virtual That's walk. A, send in the donation. Just raise money. Oh, send yeah, it yeah. in and raise the bucks. Okay. So, so Karen recruited me yeah. at the event. Yes. I, I wasn't really aware of that, even though I live pretty close to the route and I've heard. I know that there are walks that happen, mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't really aware of it. So she said, hey, we'd love to have you walk. And, and then she said, and I went, really, 20, how many miles is it, 26.2? Mm -hmm. um, I said, I'm gonna have to start walking training now. And then she said that the half one starts in Wellesley, yeah. somewhere. So I might do half this year in the full. And That's a smart idea. I'm not sure. You're Skis really, really it. sore the first time you do it. And then it's almost like you have muscle memory. You're not as sore oh, the next good. time. I mean, when, when we do it, we do the 26. Yeah. And um, as I get older, I'm training a little bit. But we used to not train at all. We used to just walk. <laughs> and you get sore. The funniest thing is when you take the bus ride back to Hopkinton and you try to get off the bus. Oh, no. Did everyone collapse? <laughs> Well, you just, well, I dropped something legs, one year and I couldn't pick it get up. Get the jiggly legs, right? Because <laughs> the muscles are starting yeah. to get fatigued. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I heard that Motrin every six hours is a good plan. Take Motrin first. Use, um, my wife told me this, these gel Band-Aid things so uh -huh. you don't get blisters. One and guy I know wears stockings. He's a guy and he wears stockings. He avoids blisters that way. There you go. I like what the gel Band-Aid idea. <laughs> 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 and um, has it ever rained when you guys walked? Oh, yeah. Um, two years ago, I think, we poured. If we had just waited 10 minutes to start, it didn't rain uh, after we reached Western Nurseries pretty much. Mm, but the first 10 good. minutes, we just got soaked, and then it was kind of miserable and for the next 10 miles. And then you were walking, and the socks were wet. And the You're wet, water. right. Yeah. So, so it didn't warm up. It's not like that oh, you're running that you have a breeze coming yep. to dry you off. Yep. You're just yeah. sitting yep. in Just like soaking. runners, you don't want it to be, you know, it's good when it's 60 degrees. It's yeah. a nice warm yeah. day. And so it's always on the third Sunday, I think. So yeah, so it's 24th. September 24th. Mm -hmm. This year. I'm but September. I noticed that you're having a touch a truck event on the 24th. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. It's not, well, I Same think day. it's a touch it. I think it's called Trains, Trucks, and yeah. Drones. I still right, have to right, talk right. to my drone friend to see if he can bring yeah, his drone. Yeah, right. Trains, planes. Trains. It says planes. Planes? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see you to land see those now. <laughs> so, how are you? So, who's going to run that if you guys are walking? Um, I think we have our garden center managers organize that. Okay. So, we have other staff running okay. that one. Cool. It's not as big of an event. We hope a lot of people show up for that, but our 
You asked the question about our event. Why don't I talk yeah. about that? Yeah. Yes, right. Well, we're going to get around. We're right getting right back to that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, because of our commitment to this Jimmy Fun Walk, um, we've always been able to raise eleven or twelve thousand dollars a year as a team of six to eight people. We wanted to get twenty-five walkers this year. Oh, good, good. And we want to raise twenty-five thousand dollars. And I don't know if we will. If we can get to twenty, I'd be happy actually. Um, so in order to do that, one of the ideas was to have this this Blooms Brews and Barbecue event and um, get people to sign up to walk like yourself. We got yeah. a few that day. Yes. Um, many and I'll more put should. it up. I'll put it up on my Facebook and invite friends. That would be great. To to join walking or donate. You yeah. know, So we'll see if we can get a group. Okay. Because yep. it really wasn't on my radar at all. And my mom has had cancer. So I like to support things that, that are cancer fundraisers yeah, from yeah. a personal perspective. And but anyone who walks it just feels yeah. so good about doing it, even though you're sore and it's hard. And uh, But it's very, it's almost emotional for some people because we all know people who have had cancer very close to us. So we do this uh, event and um, uh, it, we, we did it so we could raise, you know, all the net proceeds went to the Jimmy Fun Walk team mm-hmm. that we're putting mm-hmm. together. Um, so you had four bands. We had four bands. I came in and heard the first band, but I cannot remember the name. So I was there the 11 Roy, You had to the one. Roy Sludge Trio, the Rationales, the F-Tones. I'm not sure who the fourth one was. Yeah, I can't remember the fourth name. F-Tones came first. Okay. Um, Rationales. And the, and the F-Tones had a mandolin. Yeah. So he's oh, really? plinky plunking yeah. on the mandolin, which is a very distinct tone. Sure. They, they had a great, great. dead sounding. Uh, they did. The voice, sound. the singer almost had a Tom Petty... Um, I was trying to identify what I thought it was Bob Dylan right Bob Dylan Tom Petty right exactly I came in listening to that and then they had the mandolin so they were a wonderful combination of different styles and then the second one had an amazing singer guitarist who sat in the middle Mm -hmm. and I had to go to my next thing so Mm -hmm. I was there 11 to 1 which was the second one were they the rationales the rationales okay and then what was the third one I can't remember and then the Roy Sludge Band was last and the Roy Sludge Band um, is that country? They're well known. I guess this guy, I think his name was Andrew, the lead singer. Okay. Uh, has been in some pretty well known bands through the years, and I can't remember which ones. Uh, but he he commanded a higher price, too. Oh. We had to pay the bands, of course. And yes. they were very generous. They didn't charge too much. Oh, but that's good. Um, he was well known. And um, he, they did kind of that, uh, what do you call that? Uh, rockabilly. Rockabilly. Style. Yeah. Brought back some things from the 60s and the 70s. Oh, that's so it was a good fun. Ending. I love rockabilly. That's good ending. I remember yeah. Stray Cats of the 80s. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> yeah. So did you, were you able to listen to it? I wasn't able to go. Okay. I did hear it going by, though. Yeah. When it went by. I was doing my own fundraising on Saturday, so I could not make it. I was doing the MDA boot drive. Ah. So big day that was a yeah. Big day. This is one of the big weekends. I, you know, it, everyone's but back. But you, you didn't stop for the barbecue? I I'm, I'm sure you heard it, but the smell... Mm-hmm. Must have been all over that area. Yeah, it was. I was on two wheels going by, and it <laughs> smelled wonderful. But I had yeah. a mission to well, accomplish. You stuck so. to your mission. Yes, so I did. tell us about which um, barbecue. I know you had. Um, well, the main guy we had was Meat at Slim's, uh, Steve Eastridge. He he does a, um, a a barbecue and not the Blooms part, but he does a beer and, and food uh, barbecue festival in Lexington every year. Okay. Organizes that so. Somebody we work with knew this guy, and that's how I got to know Perfect. him. Perfect. And he really helped us this year get it off the ground. He got all the other food guys. Great. He got some of the breweries. He did. Prep and breweries. Start Line we have here. Start Line was the other guy, Ted Tip Twenty, was yeah. part of our group too. Yeah. Talk about him in a second. But okay. uh, Steve then also got the the bands as well. He oh knew my gosh. Guys. So he really pulled it together for mm-hmm. made it easier for us to get all these people here. That's the first great. Year. Yeah. So so. So our question, the big question is, is this going to be an every year event, do you think? We, we I thought intended it was great. that from the get-go. We didn't want to say first annual in yeah, case it was yeah, a yeah, bust yeah. or something, oh. but it wasn't. It was so successful. It was great. It was, it was great. the most successful event we've ever had. Yeah. We truly made it off to the side of our garden center in this nice area that we built. It's about 10,000 square feet of grass. We call it the Coliseum. It's right. a brown park-like setting up there. I don't think anybody's ever been up there, first of all. Well, I have to say, when I worked there, that's where you had your garden statues. Right. So you had it as a display area 
for someone who might be putting beautiful statuary yeah, garden decor, in the garden. Right. 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 So I have been up there. Yeah. So when I walked into it, I knew immediately. I didn't. I didn't know where the statues went. <laughs> it wouldn't. It just didn't work. We couldn't get our customers. <laughs> yeah. up the hill, up the hill and they didn't want to walk in too too far. Well, away, when you film up a food yeah. down, yeah. we put the food up there. Yeah. And they could yeah. roll down yeah. afterwards. But I think we found the secret for that spot, and that is they have events. And the parking, I have to say, the way you you channeled everyone you know, direct everyone to the event parking, mm -hmm. and then you had people bringing mm -hmm. people in. We put a lot of study time into yeah. that parking situation. We were worried, we didn't know how many people were gonna yes. show up the first year, we wanted to make sure we had enough spots. So yeah. we had about six people with walkie-talkies and yes. orange flags, really great. filling up the spots tightly. It turned out we did such a good job of filling in every spot that we never used a third of our parking. But that's perfect. That's awesome. We had 75 spots across the street Oh. Uh, on Roy's Lane, where the Fitzpatrick House is, that we, oh, yes. use and we never had to use it. Yeah. So because of that, we know now because we had 800 people show up wow. for this, and I don't think that includes the service staff, the band, the you know. So it's really more like 900 when you include everybody. Yeah, that's there. great. That's great. So and that's, we fit them in fine. So, so now that you get this one under your belt, you know, email question came in. Having nice. been through it once. What would you do differently? Oh my gosh, lots of things. So our meeting actually couldn't meet this week, but we're all talking, bringing our ideas to so a Monday meeting. Well, it's fresh. Yeah. But for instance, one of the meat guy, one of the barbecue guys, didn't do as well as the other because he was further away from the beer guys. So oh. what, what we realize is people hang around the beer tents. Uh -huh. Beers <laughs> tends to be the main. Really, they do not. Really, it was it the barbecue? Was it the blooms? No? It wasn't the blooms? It wasn't the barbecue beer? <laughs> So Shoot. one big idea is we will interdisperse the right. beer and the food. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. you we'll had, I noticed you had, when you came into the area off the parking, you had the beer on the left, sort of, mm -hmm. and then you had your barbecue mm -hmm. kind of in the semicircle on the right, right. and then band straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yeah, right. so I think alternating is a good idea. Right. Um, we were, we we're going to probably use more space next year, too. We have a little more space. Maybe we don't need quite as much for parking that we realize we can go uphill from there. Uh -huh. And we already had downhill, but I don't think a lot of people went down there. They didn't see it. Yeah. Because the way we set it up, it was kind of blocked from view. Right, exactly. So next year, we'll be able to spread it out a little more now that we know we have enough what, parking to come. What do you think the average person spent there for time? You know, I was thinking two hours going in. Thinking. Two hours, yeah. And, but and I'll bet it was a little more than that. Well, the thing is, if I had, if I didn't have something after word I would have stayed because I really wanted to hear all the bands and I was only it was a little bummed that I had to go after yep. one and a, half. a lot of people came kept their bracelet and came back came and back. I thought oh, about doing that I thought too. about that mm -hmm. uh, so I think I think you're gonna find that people stay longer next year because people didn't weren't sure what it was right you know so it's try it out uh, I had an amazing piece of cornbread with salted caramel topping. Oh, I didn't have that. Oh my gosh. That was at the, I forget, it was on the right, might have been the booth that had the waffle cone that cost $18. Oh, that was the smoke shop out of Cambridge. Yeah, because yeah. in this $18 thing, they had a waffle cone and then they put all the barbecue into this waffle cone. It was 18 bucks for that? I think so. Holy cow, it must have been. And then there was, no, maybe the, maybe the, no, it, that, was that was 12, that was 12. And then the $18 thing, I think they had three different types of meat. Anyway. In, the, in the waffle cone. Yeah. Wow. That's another amazing. thing we might do. We had so many kids show up. We might want ice cream next year, too. Oh, we might idea. add that in because the idea. kids were everywhere. Right. And there were young kids and they were playing and having fun. We had things for them to do, too. Yeah. So yeah. maybe a little more. Were, were you kids expecting kids when you call it, you know, the, the Bloom's Brew and Barbecue? Mm hmm. Just a brew spot. Mm hmm. Did you, you really did expect kids, so you had stuff for them? Well, we had Ooh. drinks for the kids, food for the yeah. kids. It's just that they, you know, they didn't have a wristband on, so they no couldn't activities, order the beer. No activities, right? But how about acti activity? You had oh, activities the wristbands for, for the beer. We had I... cornhole. We had Jenga. The yeah, big they had Jenga. Jenga. Well, Giant right. Jenga. Uh, we had this game called um, what do you call it? The frisbee one where you slam it into slam the, uh, can. Slam can. Slam jam. We had oh, that. Jam can. Yeah, and kids we had, were having a great time. We had a waterfall that we hadn't worked hadn't worked in like five years, and we got it running right before this event. Oh, That's see? where all the kids went. Is the waterfall? Well, of course they did. The big waterfall but, the, into the not hill? the big one. There's oh. another one that but we the, had. The other thing the kids did was danced. The, the kids were up in front of the band dancing. Oh yeah, they were. Cool. It was really cute. That's a lot of fun. And to Snappy see. Dogs was to the right yeah. of the of the bandstand. Yeah. So the kids were, you know, dancing yeah. at the band, going to get a hot dog and dancing with their idols. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, the kids, the kids that I saw were having a great time. The adults were having a great time. Um, it smelled great. It sounded great. You know, I did go down and look at the garden center a little bit, but really, I was. Embarrassed. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you, I'll sell you, I'll say this. We didn't, we wanted to keep this entirely separate from the business. There was no incentive to go into the garden center, but we actually had a really good day in the oh, garden that's center great. too. I'm so glad. So it was either a lot of people left this and went down there, or more people came in thinking they do both. I don't know. Well, Maybe that, they thought they'd get the better parking spot in yeah. the garden center <laughs> right. and walk through the back. Right. That's but how I would do it. Some people could have lied and said, That's I'm how I would have shop, done. and then they yeah. really want to Because <laughs> right. we didn't want to park people in our front parking lot right. during most to of the day, but the toward the end, we, we parked there, too. Right, but I think, for me, since I was already there, I went down to look at chrysanthemums. Yeah. You know. Yeah, pumpkins were in. Yeah, oh, pumpkins are in. Yeah. I didn't. They're in. Mm, They're I in. missed that. I didn't go far enough. Yeah. Pumpkins are in yeah. usually the beginning of September. Not just the Dunkin' Donuts. They're at Western Michigan <laughs> and every other guy. Yeah. Pumpkins are everywhere. Pumpkins are everywhere. Here. Hey, I did get a Facebook message. Uh, this is from our friend Joe Hayward. He, uh, and I don't know, in the control room, can I say, can I quote no. this? No? Okay. Huh? He wants to know what the heck I'm doing here if it's called the Jenny Maggi Show. Well, exactly. Thank in. you very much. Yeah, everyone wants to know what I'm doing here. Mike, thank is, you. Thanks, Mike has not told you some things about himself. <laughs> Lots of things. Lots of things. <laughs> I just don't have enough money yet. Okay. <laughs> On to the next. <laughs> yeah. Well, so definitely going to be annual, looking at different things. Uh, still, would you call it the same thing? Would you just change it up? Or I think, you know, I liked it. this team I love coming the name. together to do it again next year. Ted 20, I mentioned from the start line, was very instrumental, too, with uh, yeah. contacting the, the craft brewers. In Perfect. The area. And the, the beer was a huge draw. There was specialty beer that you can't find right. everywhere. Yeah, and that's, you know, I, I have to say that, of course, I love living here. I love Hopkinton. But it's these special things that just make it even more special. Mm -hmm. You know, because we already have the Garden Center, which is amazing. And, you know, it's unique. And I love you guys. But then you take that Garden Center that's already amazing, and you do this amazing event in it. That's, and then and then have it go every that's year. That's and, and we'll have more events up there. I don't know what they are yet. Yeah. Um, but we'll make it available for other groups. It can be related to horticulture, what we do, or gardening, or it could be something entirely separate. Well, I have to say, my daughter got married a year ago, a year and a half ago. <laughs> and as I was up there, mm -hmm. looking at this and this beautiful grass, and the, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, you, it's not, you know, not a bad I need place. More, I would like to hear from our listening audience if they think that's a good idea, because the yeah. band guy who controlled all the bands really thought that was a good idea that well, we have weddings up there. I think you could. Mm -hmm. And they and could I said, walk. I don't know if oh, it's how many enough, wedding, but How many couples take pictures up there on top of the It's beautiful the there. The more people I tell them to, the more people think that is a good idea. Especially so. because you have that area. It would, you know, it's not, yeah, you could. You definitely could. You pull it because off. you had how many tables in the center? We had a 40 by 40 tent with about 16, 20 tables in there. So 16, 20 tables, each table is a 12? Eight. Eight. Yeah. So eight times 20, 160. Yeah. So a lot of weddings are 150 people. Yeah, yeah. And you we know? could have fit a bigger tent in there. In fact, we had a bigger yeah. tent rented, but we made it smaller yeah. at the end because the day was so nice. You did. Well, I well, know we, we could go on it. for this for a while, but we are coming to a close of the segment. Are you wrapping the closing? I would have to. Okay. I guess I would. I'll do the opening for the next one then. That's a deal. Okay. So guess what? We're done right now. And uh, you going to join us for the next segment? Uh, I'll stick around a little bit. Don't ask me too bit. many difficult questions. All right, we'll, we'll make it easy. We'll make it easy. <laughs> no. We're going to be right back, and Peter's going to join us, so we'll be right back right after this. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I know it's When he calls Hopkin and home lives with in terms of putting down our new roots here. So uh, the people, obviously, there's a lot of things that Hopkinton offers that brings that in from the parks to the schools to uh, the community and history here, the race. Uh, there's so many things that I think make it, you know, kind of a fun uh, and special place to be. This week on HCAM, journalist David Wallace gives us tips on how to spot fake news. Media is a term like diet or personality or any other vague sort of descriptor because media is a thing. It's the internet, it's a CD, it's a news wire. What we're talking about is news and facts and how to... This week on Meet Your Neighbor, Shell Perrault introduces us to Stacey Osgood as we learn about her career as a chef. And um, um, we just really gelled and I became his sous chef at Los Folies. And so for the eight Hi, and we're back. Welcome back. We're here with Peter Mezet, who is from Weston Nurseries, and we were just talking about the fabulous 
Bloom's Brews and BBQ event that he had um, that we hope is every year. It seems like it's going to be. And our next segment is going to be talking about DACA. Um, so DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And it came out of something, actually, the history is that Ronald Reagan actually had an Immigration Reform and Control Act that was a precedent, talked about how do we control the immigrants coming in. Obviously, that's what the, um, the title says. And at first, they didn't, they didn't have kids being accepted. Um, and then he changed that. And then in 2001, there was something called Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors. And I'm so glad they don't call immigrants aliens anymore because right. all I can think of is Gazoo from the Flintstones or <laughs> <laughs> or E.T. <laughs> but anyway, because, um, you know, we all came here on a boat pretty much at some point in our history, right. our, our ancestry. Um, so 2001, then that passed the House, 2010, but it wasn't enough to get to the Senate, through the Senate. So Obama made the executive order in 2012, 12. June 2012. Yep. So now we're looking at um, what happened when Trump wants to rescind it, and people are really upset. Um, it protects children, Im immigrant children from deportation who came in as children if they're younger than 31 as of June 15, 2012, came here before age of 16, lived here continuously since June 15th of 07. They were in school, graduated, or obtained certificate of completion from high school, or were honorably discharged veteran of Coast Guard or Armed Forces, haven't been convicted of a felony, significant misdemeanor, and do not otherwise pose a threat to national security or public safety. So that's all, those are all the facts that I wrote down trying to figure out what is this program. And then um, trying to figure out why would, why would that be rescinded. Um, so we really like you guys to join the conversation. Email us live at hcam.tv or call us 508-435-7880. Let us know your thoughts. Do you think we should rescind DACA and do we send all those children back that came here, re reject their immigrant status? You know, I'm kind of unsure what happens next. I know you, ha you took some notes on yeah, that. Yeah, I took some notes too. And you know, it, it, my notes are very mirror yours. And as a person, you know, when my grandparents immigrated here from Armenia, they uh, escaped the uh, the uh, genocide from the Turks oh, back yeah. in the mm -hmm. uh, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And they had a process, and I believe my name was changed. It had two S's in it, and now it only has one uh, through our research of history and immigration. But there's a process, okay? And now you, you, you'd like to see that process continue. Just don't want anyone to get a free ride collecting, you know, government benefits and so on. No one wants that. But, okay, now the system's put in place for you to naturalize and, and to become legal. And why rescind it? Is it not working? Is, it, is this so bad that it's not working? Is there another... All right, so what's the solution to that? Mm -hmm. Don't just sit down and say, well, I'd like to see something better. Well, don't reset it until you have that something better. I well, the other thing, I mean, my, what I always go to is, again, my my ancestors came on the Mayflower. I I have one percent Native American according to Ancestry.com, <laughs> but you know, really, unless we're Native American, we're not from here. Correct. So, which I mean, to me, if they if they the children, and I think this was Obama's argument, if the children came here. And they they didn't they didn't break any laws. They were just came with their parents, and so they've been American since they were little, mm -hmm. and they they're good citizens based on all these criteria. Why would you change that? And I think you know, look at the other side. I think Trump is very much interested in keeping jobs for Americans. Right. You know, so so if it looks like someone who's not American is taking a job, then he's trying to keep it all here. So I guess I could sort of see both sides. But I know you have people work for Western Nurseries from Mexico mm -hmm. or, or other places. We used to have. Used to, lot. okay. When we were a field growing and a container growing oh, right. operation, we had the agricultural work. And the fact is, those are the people who would be, are willing to do the work. And work hard. And they work hard, and it's all across the country. They support agriculture. They support the food on the table that you right. eat. And um, w without them, they're... There already is a very un low unemployment. I, I don't understand why we're 
so critical of it. Right. And, you know, there was a case in California where um, they tried to hire people that uh, were, you know, not from other countries and no one applied for these jobs. It was agriculture, it was picking strawberries. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. H-2A and H-2B programs exist because of that. Right. So every year a certain amount of uh, immigrants are let to come in for usually around six months to do this agriculture right. work. It just wouldn't, the work, there's not enough people to do the work. Right. So I don't understand all the rules about DACA. And yeah, I tried to I understand. Was, but, I, but you cannot get people make people go away they're already right. here that's the most ridiculous right especially if it's a child they who's have nowhere born to go here. it's a child who's born <clears throat> here mm -hmm. and so the parents they speak are, english <laughs> they and they're a productive citizen mm -hmm. they are everything they're american that a citizen is and they have no other home and it's probably dangerous of course they it is they can't, and, go, they and can't like, go backwards on exactly this. and like you were saying armenians came in because they were being killed right. in turkey right. um you know we've had other countries trying to get away from horrible situations where they live sure. and that's what isn't that what the statue of liberty says what does it li give us you're tired you're poor yeah. something yeah. Little the yeah. statue of liberty says come here we welcome you not only so, about that but these most of these people are fantastic people of course yeah. and i know in, in our company uh, there's a bolivian um, i call him a kid still he's probably 35 but that's because <laughs> he's worked here for so long yeah and he started out in the fields. He was a loader. He learned. He went to green school. What is his name? I have the first name. Leo. Leo. I remember Leo. You know Leo. And I saw him, and I looked at him, and I thought, is that Leo? Because he's yeah. so much old. He's, that was 10 yeah. years. You know, when I was working there, it was right. um, probably 15, 13 years right. ago. Right, right. But I thought that Leo was... Leo is our top sales person so nice. in this company. He's so and nice. everybody loves Leo. Yep. He's a, he's a fantastic guy. But one of the reasons he's successful is because our whole industry has an English uh, barrier, a language barrier, and oh. he can speak Spanish, he can speak Wonderful. Portuguese, so Wonderful. he's super successful for that reason, too. Of course. But then, you know, every landscaper has people who are, were uh, brought in from usually southern, you know, South America, Central American countries yeah. working for us. Well, they know how to make the grass grow and the plants grow. Yeah, and they know how to work and, hard. And, and they work hard. And they grow up with that ethic. And see, and if to take some words that I've heard on TV, they help make America great. Mm -hmm. They do. So anyone who comes to the country or is in the country that works hard and and helps companies succeed, what I why I don't understand. What, I, I don't either. What do you guys think? We wonder what you think. Um, if you're watching, you have an opinion on this. Do you agree <laughs> that we should keep um, immigrant children who are here and born here? Um, call us at 508-435-7880. Let us know what you think. Or email live at hcam.tv. I think we have a caller. No. If they're born here, oh. they're American citizens. Yeah. Not is for children who were brought here. Brought here. Not born here. Thank you, Sound Booth. Yeah. That was Jim and the Sound Booth correcting us. So, so DACA is for, they're called the Dreamers. But it really, it's, I think it's their parents who have the dream. Right. right. Yeah. And... The process going Thanks. over, it, this process is really intense. Read off the bat. Yeah. First thing they tell you, get a qualified attorney. Mm. So that tells you right there, number one, it's going to cost you. Number two, it's complicated. Proof of identity, date of birth. You need proof of you're physically present in the U.S. before uh, 615, 2000. I mean, on 615, 2012. Uh, proof you had five years continuous residence. Proof you were in it's school or have a high school diploma. Proof you entered the uh, entered the U.S. before 16. All these, there's tons and tons of things that you need. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy process. So, it's a process. What, what's wrong? Why, why just stop it? Right. Is it because we said, well, you know what? There's enough of them coming in. Let's stop? Uh, that well, doesn't I think make that's, sense. I think that's the argument that we're trying to save the jobs for people who already are citizens. But like you're saying, you know, these people come in, they're wonderful, productive, clean living, you know, I, it just doesn't make sense. So it's people who were brought in, it's the children. The children right. came in with the parents. And they're saying if you go back before that date, they're okay? And those other conditions apply? Well, they don't after, after that here. date, don't forget though, they, it, they gotta go. your children brought here, but you are now over 31. You cannot age out of the program. Uh, you know, so there's renewals for your work permits. All these other processes here that 
Uh, I guess they're at a screaming halt. Yeah. Yeah. Let me no, see. I'm not. I'm not but, privy to all the details of this. I just know that, you know, in the in the big picture, I think they should have a controlled program going forward. Sure. The, you know, you shouldn't have a a uh, bound uh, boundaryless country. Right. I agree exactly. with that. Right. And people should follow the rules. I agree with that part. Right. We have a, uh, a Facebook comment from Great. Stephanie. Everyone should be given an opportunity. I don't believe they should eliminate the program. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Absolutely. I agree. Hey. So this is the other thing. I looked online. Um, this is from the Independent Post or postindependent.com. Um, provisions. Ex Obama's executive order did the following. Allowed individuals to apply for deferred action for two years subject to renewal. So if someone was up for deportation under the border, the Homeland Security Office, um, they, they could defer the action for two years and they could renew that deferred action um, under the DACA program. Approval made applicants eligible for renewable work visas instead of that short-term work visa, then you have to go back. Um, it did not provide a path to citizenship or make those covered eligible for health insurance. Um, so, it's giving a little bit of a different status than just being um, automatically citizen. But now it says President Trump last week, this is uh, a couple weeks ago, suspended DACA, urged Congress to come up with a replacement. Here are provisions of his order. This is what Trump said. Initial requests for DACA were halted immediately. Homeland Security will process requests accepted by September 5th. Homeland Security will process only those renewal requests, with blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's really limiting what can happen. Um, it does provide permanent residency for those brought to the country illegally before age 18 who have not committed crimes and have been continuously present for four years before the law. So it, and it also says it includes a path to citizenship. So, so Trump's order does have kind of, there's a little bit of a balance there. Um, but it's just too bad. I think it's too bad for the people that were on route. Didn't we have some people that were on their way here? Oh, no, that was from the countries that were, the six countries that were not allowed. Right. Yeah. Oh, but well, you know, yeah. trying to tighten things up, trying to, you know, pull his whole thing together. You know, he's trying to turn this whole Democratic thing around. He's trying to run the country like a business which exactly well that's his that it, that's his background that's, that is the background that's what he's doing and I you did, can see just by you know replacement of his people and his staff yeah oh, i well. mean in the corporate world that's exactly how they go you know <laughs> well, that was his tv show too yeah, same but idea. um today i heard on the news that he is starting to look at um the tax something about the tax situation and try to make the middle class economy a little stronger he said, the quote was, he's not trying to give tax breaks to the wealthy. That's what he said. And that he was going to try to help support the middle class. And that next week he was going to have a little bit more of a decision on DACA. So to be continued, I hope, I hope that it evolves and becomes a more balanced um, decision-making process. I'm just also wondering, too, if, he's trying, if Trump is also trying to make this process faster. You know, you look at all the rules that they got here, and it, it could take a couple of years to to uh, pull this all together. Mm -hmm. Is he trying to make something that's going to go in three months to speed it up Cutting this way? The weed cost it up? of the bureaucracy involved. Cut, you know, that could be Probably that could be part man. of it as well. You know, because we all know how government can tie up. Oh yeah. Especially if you're a private businessman trying to do something in government, you know how much money it costs. Any delay, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, um, Kazir Khan, remember Kazir Khan and the uh, the Gold Star veteran parent. Yes. Um, so he actually spoke. Um, he was born in Pakistan, moved to the U.S. with his wife in 1980. They had three sons, and they became American citizens. One of the sons was killed in 2004, serving as a U.S. Army captain. And then Khan stood up and kind of had some words for Trump. Um, Trump's stance against immigrants and Muslims at the Democratic National Convention. Um, but when the Trump administration announced its plan to end DACA um, with a six-month delay for current, recip current recipients, um, Kazir went to speak 
to it's this more than 1,000 people at St. Luke's Methodist Church in Indianapolis. And the title was Talking Through Unity and Civility with Kazir Khan. So he, he is not happy. Right. And uh, feels that the president is totally uncompassionate and um, could cause more harm. Well, someone has sent us an email that says Trump tweeted that he will revisit if Congress doesn't act. So shouldn't everything be okay then if he's going to revisit it? Uh, <laughs> no, that's no, if, Tom, if Congress doesn't I mean, I don't, act I don't on have what? the actual tweet. If Congress in, doesn't act on what? In which and I'm way? assuming what that's that? him on does, his. Does that say phone? anything? I'm not sure that says anything. I didn't see the tweet. Though. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I, I mean, the only thing I can think is, I think it's an evolution. You know, I think. You threw, a businessman got thrown into a presidency. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of things at the same time and, and different fires to put out and address. And um, it's, it's a really, I wouldn't, it's a tough job. Every person that goes in there turns very gray and, and very fast, ages yeah. Yeah. very fast. It's yeah. a tough, 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 tough job. I, you know, so. I, I believe in the fact that also you're not going to please everybody. Right, of course not. And, you know. It's, it's a tough job. Yeah, no one successful pleases everybody. Nobody. Well, Nobody. Peter Mezzi does. Oh, I'm sure, even with Peter. <laughs> he even has some very unhappy customers. And look at my no. grandma. I've seen it, yeah. See? But it's, it's true. Open, it's and, and he's, oh, and he's right. 10 years younger than I am. Huh? No. <laughs> so um, the other thing is Pope Francis weighed in on this. He did. Pope Francis is pro-DACA and, of course, believes that families should be protected and... Uh, know in the same way that I believe the tweet uh, oh, who was uh, sent over to us Congress now has six months to legalize DACA something the Obama administration was unable to do okay if they can't I will revisit this issue so good so he's putting a fire under it right and that may be an effective that may be right. a good technique I mean I I'm open to seeing what he's doing with it I just personally feel that people who are here are here Especially, you know, if they're productive and, and the they process. follow all those conditions and right. they the graduate process, high school stay. or they have a certificate and they're, they have a job or they're a veteran. You know, the people who are fighting for our country and working for our country are part of our country. It's, to me, it seems kind of simple. I don't know. Call me simple-minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't agree with that either. So, anyway, um, so I'm, I uh, appreciate your thoughts on that. No, it's, um, yeah, my thoughts have to do with, you know, I grew up in, it was agriculture, horticulture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a time where um, local Caucasian people that we have around here would do the work. That just ended. Yeah. And it's, you know, the Spanish people, um, like I say, Central American, South American people that, that do that work. Mm -hmm. that, and do it well. And they do. And they do it better. And, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of these guys, you know, I'm happy for them because they really made a good living out of it, too. And their kids are coming out, too. Facebook yep. comment from Craig. Unfortunately, Trump supports DACA. Luckily, he also supports the Constitution. He just oh. wants to make things this make this executive order a proper law passed by Congress. And I agree with that. I think that would, that if that's thank what you, he's Craig. doing, thank you, Craig. If that's what he's doing, that's wonderful. And I agree with that. So I'm, I'm just not sure, and I... And I you know, I feel protective. I work with a lot of kids of a lot of different backgrounds, sure. and I love them all. And you know, melting pot, toss salad, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, I, we're yep. all Americans in my mind. Okay, so that's it for this segment, and um, we thank you for being with us. Check out the next segment. We're going to talk about scenic roads in Hopkinton. What is a scenic road? Why should we fight for that in our town? Thank you. Start. I think. This week on All About Hopkinton, Mary Anna introduces us to the Hopkinton Board of Health's new health director, Sean McAuliffe. Uh, promote public health, I mean, putting together walking or hiking clubs and, and helping educate how these different, um, you know, be it an exercise group, um, we can promote, you know, tick safety while promoting healthy, um, healthy living. And I would like to know from Blake, how did you learn to be this way? Were you born respectful? Did you say, thanks mom for doing all that work, here I am? Um, how did um, you learn how to be respectful? My brother kind of taught me and my parents 
brothers and parents. Yeah. yeah. But how did they help you know how to treat other people? Oh, wait, they teach me uh, stuff ahead. Taught you uh, stuff well, ahead? Yeah, like what I should do. I don't know. We this week on the Golden Pan, Lisa and the crew cook up some nice fish chowder. We never do anything quite as well as Nana. <laughs> we try. Yeah, quite. So these are almost, almost transformed. Yeah. Right. yeah. Maybe a couple more minutes. Okay. All right. So the onions are translucent, Mary. My work here is done. And we're back for the last segment of the Jetamaji Show. And we'd love to hear from you. This segment here, we're going to be talking about scenic roads. And, you know, what's your favorite scenic road? And not just necessarily here, but we're going to specifically get started with talking about the scenic roads in Hopkin and what a scenic road means. So, yeah. scenic roads, it's been in the paper recently with some of my construction issues. But being in construction oh, 30 years ago... <laughs> uh, for 21 years, um, scenic roads are just what they are. They are roads that are protected from any disturbances whatsoever. Right. You cannot pull a leaf off a tree. You cannot trim a branch. You cannot remove a stone off a stone wall. Or if you had a stone on a shoulder sticking out, you can't touch any of that stuff. So what happens is when you start bringing in construction... And the homes that go around on these scenic roads, which there's plenty of them, um, how, how do you get things built? What do you do? Yeah. So um, my I live on a scenic road or scenic route, scenic road. Road. But yeah. um, so on my road, my understanding is that the wall, like you said, you can't disturb the wall that's on the side of the mm -hmm. road, and any tree that's next to the road. So you can clear trees on your on your property yes, but I right agree. on that road yeah. you're not supposed to touch anything but i have a neighbor who took down the wall that was in front of their house clear cut some trees and i don't exactly know how that happened um and looking at the saddle hill situation that's that's coming up now and was up before the planning board um like you were saying your dad was there i uh, there's an article in the hopkinton independent that just came out this week um and some of the quotes from this are that um, Jim Kleinkoff says, due to confusion on the planning board, they ordered Parsons Commercial Group of Framingham to stop site work. Correct. But at the end of this article, Jen Burke said, who's the um, assistant planner. Or assistant planner. Yeah, I forget who her title is. But anyway, she said. Um, well, okay, so I'll, I'll get to do the whole thing. Scenic Road Bylaw forbids removing stone walls and trees along designated scenic road without a permit from Planning Board. Sure. Yeah. Jennifer Burke said 23 feet of stone wall had been removed by contractors during site work. She recommended a $6,900 fine be imposed on them for that stone wall. They put the wall back, um, and then they began accessing the property from another point that didn't involve taking the wall down, mm -hmm. which makes, why didn't they do that in the first place? I don't know. Then uh, Frank Durso got up at the August 28th planning board meeting, maybe that's where your dad was, and said that he understood the project was ANR, approval not required, um, because they withdrew the earlier plan to build a 19-home subdivision. But at that point, that's when they clear cut. Right. So that, that area, I go by there every day or a couple of times a week, and it's clear cut. Right. It's something that we would call, well, you would call clear cut, but... The, the process that they have to do, I mean, you have soil testing, mm -hmm. which you have a minimum of an acre buildable lot. In, in, in Right? Is it an acre right now uh, for new construction? Uh, or is it agriculturally an zoned, it's an acre of 40,000 uh, 40, All right. Yeah. So you, you have that. You have to test the entire site for a septic system. And then once you start doing all your testing and you get an idea, you cannot... Do get a building permit until you can prove a well works there, mm -hmm. and to get a well drill truck into a site requires building a road. You know, you just can't. They don't have four wheel truck like you could take your jeep or your quad and get to that site. You need to drill a well and work it, test it, make sure it works. And then once you do that, 
then you can get a septic design and a building permit. So there's a lot of tree cutting that needs to be done for uh, any kind of subdivision kind of work. Any, how many lots are going in up there? Seven, nine? Well, this, this, well it says 19, 19. but they, they, were, they took that back. But what they're concerned about is you don't have to clear cut to put houses in. If you plan it correctly, you could have a few right. trees but for each you, section. Sure, but and, if but if you have, and I'm not taking their size because I don't know the site. I haven't yeah. been up there since oh, I built up there cut. 20 years ago. But my point is, if you're surrounded by stone walls and you only got one way in and you got to access 19 lots, you got to build a road. Well, eventually, but I think right, but the point was at the beginning, um, they the neighbors were alarmed right. because they thought this was something that the planning board would have to get per have permission, give permission to mm. take the stone wall down on the scenic right. route. And also clear cut because they weren't aware of that. But so the Dur Durso said was talking about that, and then concerned that if it's an ANR, don't they have to come to for approval? But Jen Burke said um, it only applies if there's frontage on a public way and no new road needs to be constructed. Like you're right. saying, if they don't need to construct a new road, and then she said it really had. This is the important part of this article. That really has no bearing on whether they do work on their own property. They have a right to cut down trees as long as they're not in a wetland. Mm -hmm. And once the developer wants to construct driveways, like you said, mm -hmm. for the new homes, that's when they would get permission Correct. for the breaks in the wall. Correct. So, so theoretically, and I heard this with the Chamberlain Whalen conversation mm -hmm. too, once the developer owns the land, there aren't... There's not a lot that the planning board or the Zach or anyone mm -hmm. can do because it's their land. Their property, correct. So that's where the difficulty right. is. Sounds and like they I, just needed to find a way in without cutting right. the wall down. And they should have done that permission. at the beginning. But right. my, my, point, my point is when I use the term build a road, a road that they can drive a truck in, not a road that is going to be for all the traffic for the 19 houses. They need to go across all these lots. You have to connect the lots almost have to, in, in right, from Because the you can't go... Now, if I was building a non-scenic road and I had four house lots right here, I could just go into each one and keep as many trees. Mm -hmm. And one of our things when we were building homes, people wanted trees. And we and took out what, what little you could. But when you have only one way in to access 19 lots, you got to drive. So you got to pick a straight shot or what, however it's configured and be able to move equipment around. Right, but the point is in this particular one, they had withdrawn the 19 lot subdivision, so right. they hadn't started any kind of anything. Well, they said at the meeting but that they, they were doing soil it. testing. And so Do they you, have to cut down all the trees yes, absolutely. for the soil testing? You have to dig holes. And these, yeah. holes have to be, these holes have to go down 15 feet or more mm -hmm. to dig, and people have to go in them and, and examine the soil. Yeah. So it has to. So a 15 foot deep hole has to be almost 10 feet wide. I didn't see any holes. I just thought trees got down. Well, they but have to I cut the trees you, before sure they can dig the holes. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the thing. So. Yeah. So and then so then maybe what should happen is because you have all these neighbors driving by on a scenic road, looking at what looks like, uh, you know, I don't know what. To, I don't know. But maybe you could, maybe someone could explain yeah. that to the neighbors and just send around a something saying, "Hey, we possible. have to dig sure. for holes or whatever. We have to dig holes, so it's, we're going to do some clear cutting. Don't be alarmed or something, because nobody knew what was happening." Craig uh, posted it on Facebook. Thanks, you, Craig. You can't take anything in the right of way without permission. Most people don't own all the way to the road, even though it may seem so. And I remember from my days of plowing, you pushed it back as far back as you can, and you dug up some people's grass that they took care of or shrubbery or shrubbery but it was the town property they just happened to take care right. of it from the exactly. center of the road i know yeah. 135 is 33 feet 33 each feet from the, the center on that main it's drag 30? yes on the main drag yeah so and i think on the, I think on the, the roads i feel like it's nine feet most of them it's 15 feet 15? on santa on a it depends on what year the subdivisions were built because the su the rules change and you can what always tell you know you know where it's just a road just a road you know how you tell your telephone poles in your fire hydrants, if they're on like different sides, the fire hydrant stops at the property line. Same with the telephone pole. So if you anything on in front of the telephone pole is the towns. Oh, that's right on the. It's right on the uh, town line. In most, um, most of the telephone poles, they try to get on the property corners too. Oh, you know, right. so it's easier to yeah. to string mm -hmm. to houses and yeah. whatever. So, right. 
That's that's how you can tell. So it, it, even though you fix it up, um, the beautiful house right across the street from here at H Camp that has that beautiful fence and everything, mm -hmm. what they did, the fire hydrant, they built the fence around it. Oh, yeah. But they made it so it could be broken away in case there was a fire that you could do it. But they know that that's not their property. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, because... Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it is. So yeah, you, you get a walk. sidewalk. Yeah, know. right. Yeah. yeah. You, the town take is what it is. And, and I found that a lot uh, digging downtown, too, that the property lines go to like the police station and, and the package store. They go right to the edge of the sidewalk, the inside mm -hmm. edge. Mm -hmm. So it could be almost it, it's, it all depends when it was when it was done. And yeah. that's why, you know, it's important to, you know, when you own a house to get a property survey done. Right. No, you could, especially if you have a decent sized yard yeah. that's wooded, not to find like in, in the, the street. You know, uh, like a downtown squared off neighborhood. Everyone's got their fences up already. Right. But if you're in a big wooded area, you want to know where your property is. And also, uh, also another comment on Facebook, the favorite drive uh, around here is Pond Street. Pond Street, and, and beautiful. I think, I think uh, one of my favorite drives is uh, Snake Hill, Winter Street. I love oh, going Snake up Snake Hill? Hill. Yeah. Winter I didn't Street. know that. Sure. Didn't know Snake Hill was a name. Oh, you, you're Are a you townie. Know either? No. Maybe it's a name. No, Bear Hill. Hill. There's Bear, Bear Hill. Hill. Of there's Winter Hill. There's uh, the Winter Hill Saddle Day? Hill. There's Skunk Hill. Where's oh, Skunk really? Hill? Is, uh, Skunk Hill is I think you there. made these names up. No, they're right. Uh, <laughs> Craig, help me. I know I know who you are. Help me out with the, some of these hills. Snake Hill? We got Honey Hill. Where's yeah, that? That's by the high school. J.C. Palmer is in, in the high school. That's Honey Hill? You know that antenna? That yeah. was Honey Hill Farm for many years. I had no idea. Yeah, highest point in Middlesex County is right there. At, Honey Hill. At the water tower? The yeah, water tower, yes. That's all part of Honey Hill. That's why the water tower is there. That's why uh, Bear Hill is... What's Bear the Hill? Hill Angels? Yeah. Bear Hills Angels. Bear Hills Angels. Right? Another water tower. What's See, yeah. you got the highest points. Yeah. Wow. And what's the Legacy Farm Hill? The north, uh, north behind you. Oh, there's, there's no hill down there. It was Airplane Field out there. Airplane, Airplane crashed Field. there once. Oh. Yeah. That's where you can see Boston from up there. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. But I'm surprised across from the high school is the highest point in Hockington. Honey Hill is Middlesex the, County. High, Honey Hill. You can look in it up Middlesex, in the, Middlesex yeah. County? Middlesex County, which oh, is the, okay. the highest point in the county. That's why we're the Hillers. That's mm -hmm. why we're the Hillers. Mm -hmm. Well, we well, we have all these hills. And uh, I know I'm missing something, and I wish Mary Harrington would call because she knows all the hills. <laughs> she might. Mm -hmm. uh, call no, she does. She knows, she knows some of the names of some of these hills. Or not much she doesn't know about this town. Right. Uh, well, they're there. <laughs> I, I might have Winter Hill wrong thinking of uh, my Somerville days. Yeah, exactly. Winter uh, Hill gang is in Somerville with white. Maybe, maybe I was thinking Winter Street. <laughs> yeah, right. Winter Street and Snake Hill. Winter right. Hill. Okay. Right. Right. I'll take that one back. But other than that, I'm standing firm on the rest of them. Snake Hill. I know there's another one missing. Okay. But so, so the scenic roads, I mean, really, I think that's part of what is so beautiful about Hopkinton. When we first looked at our house, Cross Street, we came up and it looked to us like a house, like a street in New Hampshire. Hmm. Like one of those, you know, rolling hills in New Hampshire. I think... Um, Ash Street, uh, um, yeah, Ash coming off front. of Clinton yep. out to front, it's like that, you know, yeah. with the hills and uh, and the stone walls. And I there was some wonderful program on maybe PBS about stone walls. New England apparently is one of the only places, maybe even Philadelphia has it too, but with stone walls because right. they dug up the farmland and dug up the stones and they made to find their properties. Yeah. Boundaries. How many stone walls go through Western Nurseries? Oh, uh, used to go through Western Nurseries. <laughs> huh? You know, I don't know. Like, okay. well, bunch, they're right? around the edges yeah. pretty much. But yeah. my son, who's really into metal detecting, he'll do a lot of Google Earth images, and he can see where the old houses used to be because of the stone walls. Oh, my gosh. And you can see the driveways used to be uh, between stone walls as well. That's so cool. So the long entranceways and a foundation. You can see it still with all the trees covering these old, old stone walls. On the hill? Where does he do that? Oh, just... He goes Google all over Earth. the place. Wow. He goes all over the place and he, he does his metal detecting. But he showed me that. So stone walls were used for driveway edges. Sure. And, you know, the big sugar maples planted on, on the mm -hmm. side of them as well. Um, mm -hmm. Elm trees, whatever. But they're also used for property boundaries for the farmers. Right, I'm getting a note from uh, Ashbraham. Cool. Nutting Hill, Northeast Slope, Massachusetts, elevation uh, 1,585 plus feet. 80, 480 is that, meters. So that's well, is that the highest point in Massachusetts? Middlesex? No, Middlesex County. Oh. Ashburnham. That's got to speed, 1,500 feet. Ashburnham's in Middlesex? Listen, so Hopkinton is the highest town. 
Highest town. Town that's probably the average height of the town or the high point of the town. Highest town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Highest point. So we're the city. We're the city on the hill that uh, Winthrop was talking about when back in the Salem days. Oh, fine. Let's go with it. We'll go with that. (laughs) Definitely go with that. Yeah. All right. So we're the highest town. Well, that's elevation wise. Wait a minute. Thank you. Elevation. Okay, that's another conversation. Conversation for another another show. Um, But that's really (laughs) cool, and I I really do. I have to say one more thing about my my personal experience. I had a beautiful stone wall on the side of my property. That was, you know, part of what made our, our home special. And unfortunately, our neighbor had dementia, um, which we learned over time. And all this, he didn't, you know, obviously he didn't know he had it. But what he would do when we, I wasn't home is he would take rocks off my wall or the adjoining wall and put them in front of his house. So I would come home and he'd have a bucket full of rocks and I'd say, where are you getting those rocks? And he'd say, oh, they're all back. But I could see where there were now little mm-hmm. divots in the wall. Mm-hmm. But then he had a nice wall in front of his house and I thought, I don't know, what do I do about this? Mm-hmm. You know, so. But so it was nice because then he had a wall and we had a wall in front of our house too. Facebook, you know, another message from Stephanie. Hopkins is growing and changing every day. I think notifications should be sent out to those who live there. Yes. Letting them know what's happening, for yes. even for testing. I Those agree. are my favorite roads to drive during the fall. I would hate to see the beauty gone, right. especially when I come to visit. I yeah, agree. No one wants Thank to see you, it Stephanie. done. But I agree. I, and, and, and also, I think that's respectful. If the builder, Parsons Group, or whatever, is going to do this devastating, clear-cutting, oh my gosh, what mm-hmm. happened thing, they really should send a notice and just say, hey, just so you know. So here's, here's the big thing, and I know we have social media now, but yeah. where do you send the notices? You put it in all the, you flyer all the mailboxes in the area because those are the people that are directly affected. Well, they're supposed to notify the abutters. Exactly the what abutters I'm saying. The abutter, well, notify the abutters. the abutters. Right, not everybody in town. Yeah. That's a you funny notify word. the abutters. Yeah. Uh, Craig uh, says the stone walls used to be mountains uh, brought to us by the last ice age. And uh, I love that. Favorite drive? Erica Drive in Valleywood. Valleywood. Where's Valleywood? <laughs> does anyone, know, Ponds, does anyone right? know where that is? Erica Drive? Yeah. Does someone know that? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, John does. Drive. Yes. Right. Not Thanks, the John. name okay. of a street, but the, the way... Right Erica Drive the is very ambulation nice. ambulation yeah, by yeah. a vehicle. That's yeah. what you mean by drive. Val- Val- <laughs> Valleywood's one, one, one of the nicest, prettiest yeah. subdivisions mm. uh, back in its day. You know, along with, you know, of course, my still my favorite is Charlesview. Mm-hmm. I love the Charles View of the Thea Heights. Yeah. Those are great. Yeah. East View, those are Back great. Wrap it up. All right, yeah, we're wrapping it. So we've been yelled at from the sound booth.